We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Beis Amud Aleph and Maseches Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf seventy two A. And the previous summer, the Gemara quoted the Mishnah, which said that if a person makes a neder upon his wife, that she's not allowed to go to Beis Amishter, the Beis Avel. So then he has to divorce her and give her the Ksuba. And the Gemara says we understand if he prevents her from going to, let's say, a wedding feast, Ika Noel Befana. There he's closing the door in front of her, as Rashi says. He's closing the door of Simcha. He's not allowed. He's not allowing her to celebrate. So therefore, that's the reason already where he has to divorce her. But if he's not letting her go to a house of mourning, my Noel Iko, what's the big deal? What is he closing before her? What's the big deal if she can't go to a house of mourning? And the Gemara answers, Tana was taught, Lamacher he mesa, because tomorrow she will die. If he ain't called Birya Softa, then no one's gonna want to eulogize her. In other words, she wants to be able to go to funerals so that when she when it comes her time, people will come to her funeral, they'll eulogize her, and therefore he is closing the door before her if he doesn't allow to if he doesn't allow her to go to the Beso Evil. And there are others who have a different language of this. Ain't called Birya Sofna. Nobody's going to take care of burying her. The same basic idea. And the Gemara continues, Tanya, we learned in Abrai, so how Rabbi Meir, Omer Rabbi Meir would say, what does the Pasuk mean when it says, Tov lelechas al beis evel, milechas al beis mishta, ba'asher husof kal adam, ba'achayitena libo, it says that it's good, better to go to the beis evel than, than the beis than the beis mishta, and because that way the person who's alive will place it to his heart, will turn his attention to the matters that are at this funeral. My ba'achayitena libo, what does it mean that the person who's alive is going to think about it, is going to consider things when he goes to this house of mourning? The answer is devarim shall misa. The answer is the person is going to contemplate things related to misa, things related to death, and the person will consider the fact the safad yisvedune, someone who eulogizes others, he himself will be eulogized. To cover yikberune, someone who buries others, he himself will one day have to be buried. To yidal yidlune, he who raises his voice who cries over others, others will cry about him. The levayi lavine, the one who escorts others, he will be escorted. The tuan yitanune, and again the one who carries the coffin of others. Others, so he also will have people who will be able to carry him. And the Gemara continues, Let's say the husband, the reason why he's preventing her from going to these places is because of Davar Acher, because of something else that will happen there. In other words, he has a reason why he's preventing her from going to the Beis HaMishra, the Beis HaOvel, so then it's okay. And the Gemara says, My Davar Acher, what is this thing that he's concerned with? Amar Rav Yudah, Mar Shmuel, Rav Yudah says that Shmuel says, Mishum Bnei Adam, Perutzin, Shemitsuyin Sham. Let's say it's an area where there are people who are Perutzim over there. There are people who are not careful in terms of their behavior. And in such a situation, there he is just in preventing his wife from going there. And the Gemara continues, Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says, Lo Now that's only true if there's a chazaka that there are people who are prutz in there. Avalo is chazik lo kal kamine. But if there's no chazaka that there are people like that, he can't simply say he's concerned with it. He doesn't have the ability to prevent his wife from going there just based on his word that he thinks it's problematic. And the Gemara continues at the two dots, Vimamar lo al menas shatomri. So then the Mishnah said that if he tells her that he's making her a condition, she has to say the following. So the Gemara says, what's the big deal about that condition? Vitema. Let her say these things. What exactly is the big issue that the husband is making his wife say certain things? And to that, the Gemara explains what the Mishnah means. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Rav Yehuda says that Shmuel says, Devarim shall kalon. What he's doing is, he's making her say things which are shameful, and she doesn't want to say these things. That's already problematic for him to force her to do that. And the Gemara continues, Osha Tehei, Mimalu, Mara La'ashba. The Mishnah said, let's say he, he tells her she has to fill up and pour into the garbage. What does that exactly mean? What's the, what's the big deal with that? The Gemara says, Vitiavit, let her do that. Who cares? And the Gemara says, No, I'm a Rav Yudah, Mar Shmuel. Rav Yudah says that Shmuel says, Shetamale vinofetzis. It's actually a reference to the fact he's telling her that after they have relations, he should spill out the seed. That's what he's making her do. And that already would not be appropriate. And they would not be able to maintain the marriage. She would be able to say she wants a divorce out of that marriage in such a situation. And the Gemara continues, Bemasnisa Tana. In the Brisa, they understood the mission as follows. They taught as follows, Shetamale asara kademayim vitar la ash, but literally means he's telling her fill up 10 jugs of water and pour it into the garbage. So the Gemara says, I understand according to Shmuel that he's telling her to spill the seed to not get pregnant. So that makes sense. He has to divorce her and give the Ksuba. He can't tell her that she's not allowed to have these children. But according to the Bryce, so what's the big deal if he tells her to pour out some water? My Nafkalamina, what does she care? Tiavit, just let her do it. What's the difference? And to that, the Gemara says, Amar Rav Barachan, Amar Rav Yochanan, Rav Barachan says, that Rav Yochanan says, Mimnei Shanir is Kishota, he's telling her to do things that make her look crazy that she doesn't have to do. 
And the Gemara continues, Amar of Kahana, of Kahana says, Hamadir es ishto, shalot tishol v'shalot tashol. Let's say a person makes a netter to his wife. She can't borrow or lend things, nafo, kvara, v'rechayim v'tanor, different kinds of sieves and mills and ovens. She's not allowed to lend out things to her friend. Yotzi v'ten ksuba. That's also a reason why he can be forced to divorce her and pay the ksuba. Why? Shemasiyah shem rabbi shcheno se. Because here he's giving her a bad name among her neighbors. He's saying she can't act neighborly. That's already something that can say, that she can say she wants a divorce. And the Gemara continues, Tanya Nami Hachi, we have a Brysa like this as well. Hamadir Sishta Shalotishal Vashalotashal Nafu Kvar Echaim Vitanor. Same thing, the person makes a nether against his wife that she's not allowed to borrow, she can't lend, different kinds of sieves, mills, ovens. Yotzi Vita and Ksuba Venesha Messiah Shem Rab Bishrenosa. He he has to divorce her and pay the Ksuba because he's giving her a bad name among her neighbors. The Khain Hisha Nadr and similarly let's say she makes such a nether. Shalotishal Vashalotashal, she won't borrow, she won't lend, Nafu Kvara Varechaim Vitanor, the the various kinds of sieves. And the mill and the oven. She says she's not going to weave nice clothing for her children. That's inappropriate on her part, and she can be divorced without a ksuba. Because again, she's now giving him a bad name among the neighbors, and so therefore it's the same logic, just in reverse. And the Gemara continues with the mission of Ve'elu Yotzo Shalo Bixuba. The following women, they can be divorced and they're not entitled to their Ksuba because of their behavior in the marriage. Ha'overes al das Moshe Let's say you have a wife and she transgresses either the law of Moshe Rabbeinu, meaning the laws of the Torah, or just the laws, the common, the common practices, Yehudis, the common practices that Jewish women would practice. Ve'ezu hidas Moshe. Now what is considered the law of Moshe that she's violating? So that would be Machiloso She'enu Moser. Let's say she feeds him food that they haven't taken off the proper meister. Umisham shaso nida, or let's say they have relations and she's a nida. Velo kotz lechala. Let's say she doesn't separate chala properly. Veno deres vein mekayemis. Let's say she makes nedarim and she doesn't fulfill. So it doesn't mean to say that any violation of the Torah is, is grounds for divorce. But as the mafarshim say, it has to be something that she does that is a threat to the marriage situation. That it makes it that it's difficult for him to live with her. That's a situation where we're going to say that she can be divorced without the ksuba. Now, what's considered das Yehudis? It's not something from the Torah, but it was a common practice of Jewish women, and if she violates that, that would also be a reason that she can be divorced without the ksuba. And so the Mishnah says, Yotza Varosha Parola, let's say she goes out with her head uncovered, Vitava Bishukum and Daberisim Kaladim, let's say she's going out into the marketplace and spinning threads and speaking with people over there, acting in the way of a prutza. Abashol Omer Abashol says, Avimakalelas Yolda Vifanov. Even, let's say, the woman, she curses those who gave birth to him in front of him. She curses her husband's parents. Rabbi Tarfin Omer, Rabbi Tarfin says, Af kolonis. Even if you have a woman, kolonis literally means she makes a lot of noise. Ve'ezui kolonis. What does it mean, a kolonis? What it means is she's loud. When she speaks inside her house, her neighbors can hear her voice, can hear everything she's saying. And the Gemara says, Machiloso she'enu mu'usr. She gives him food that the miser wasn't taken off. And the Gemara says, Hechi dummy, what's the case over here? Idiyada, if he knows about it, if he's aware, so nifr, so let him separate. Or let him separate from the food. He shouldn't eat it. And he delo yad. And if he doesn't know, mino yada. So how is he supposed to know? How does he know even that he should be divorcing or without a ksuba? And the Gemara says, lo no tzricha. The case could be needed as follows. Do amrle, she says to him, ploni kohen tikin le asakri. She says, so and so, the kohen, he fixed everything. He took off the miser. The ozel shaili. And then he goes in and asks that kohen, vishtak shikri. It turns out that it's false. So now he has found out that she has given him to eat things where, where the miser was not taken off properly. And the Gemara continues at the two dots in Misham Shah. So Nida, let's say she has relations with him when she's a Nida. Again, the Gemara asks, Hey, Chidami, what's the case? Eat the Yadaba if he knows about it. So Nifra, she should separate from her. Eat the Lo Yad if he doesn't know about it. So Nismachalove. So he's allowed to rely on her. The Yomar of Chinna Barkana, Marshmul, because Rav Chinna Barkana says that Shmuel says, Minayan Lanida Shasoferis Liatzma. How do we know that we trust the Nida to count the days of impurity and purity for herself? Shinamar, like the Pasuk says, the Safrullah Shivas Yamim, Loliatzma says she counts these seven days to herself, so we trust her to count the days and to tell the husband when she is pure. And the Gemara says, Lo no tzricha, the case is needed. What happened was, she said to him that so and so, the Talmud Chacham, the Chacham, he said that this blood was pure, so he said I was pure. And then he goes and he asks the Chacham, it turns out she was lying. If you want, I could say, Rav Yehuda follows what Rav Yehuda said. Because Rav Yehuda said, The case should be that among her neighbors, the women used to know when each other, when they were Nidas. So she's a presumed to be a Nida among her neighbors. So Baal in such a situation, her husband can be given malchus if he has relations with her when she's a nida in such a case. 
And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Let's say she doesn't separate Chala for him properly. So, hey, Chidami, again, what's the case? Idi Yada, if he knows Nifra, he should, he should separate from it. Idi Lo Yada, Mino Yada, if he doesn't know. So, how does he know? So, the Gemara says, Lo, no, it's Richa, it's needed in the following case. The Amr Le Ploni Givel, a Gabal Tikan Le Asisa, she says, So and so who needs the dough, he's the one that fixed it for me. Vyazel Shaili, and he goes in and asks the person. And again, Vishtakach Shikr, it turns out that it's a lie. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said of an Oderes ve'ina mekayemes. Let's say she makes nedarim, but she doesn't fulfill her nedarim. And the Gemara says do amar mar, because the Master said ba'avon nedarim bonim mesim. The, the sin of oaths. If a person does not keep their oaths, so then with that sin, because of that sin, the children die. That's why that's something that is a threat to a normal marriage. Shenemar, like the pasuk says, al titen es pichalachti es b'sarecha. Talks about your mouth causing uh, causing your flesh, causing this punishment of, among your flesh, meaning among your children. And it talks about Maisa Yodav. So, what are the Maisa Yodayim of a person? It's referring to the children. That's what the Pasuk is referring to. And we'll see over here the full Pasuk in Kohelis. going to cause damage to Maisa Yodach. Again, that's referring to the children. And the Gemara continues. Rav Nachman, Amr Mehach, Rav Nachman says from here, from the following Pasuk, the Pasuk says, La shav hikesias b'neichem, la shav al iske shav. It's talking about hikesias b'neichem, again, hitting the children, and it's iske shav, that's referring to shav, that's when a person makes these oaths and he doesn't carry through. And the Gemara continues, Tanya, we learned in a bride, so Hayyar Rabbi Meir, Omer Rabbi Meir would say, Kal hayodeya b'ishto shenoderes ve'ina mekayemis, if anyone knows his wife is making the dharam and not fulfilling, yachzor v'yadi rena, so he should go and make her make the oath again, that way he can annul the oath. And that's what the Gemara now clarifies, yadi rena b'may misakin if he makes her make the netter, how does that fix anything? And that's what the Gemara says, al yachzor v'yakni tena, k'day shetadr b'fana v'yafer la, no, the idea is he should anger her, so to speak, get her to make the netter again, and then he'll go ahead and he will annul it. And the Gemara continues, Amrulo, they said to him, Ein adam darim nachash bechvifa. So that's again, that was Rabbi Meir's advice, get her to make the nether again, he can annul the nether, but they said back to him, no, that's not a good solution, a person can't live together with a snake in the same basket, meaning, don't try to fix the situation, this is a wife that the person cannot be with. And the Gemara continues, Tanya, we learned in a bride, so hire Rabbi Yehuda, Omer, Rabbi Yehuda would say, Kol yodev, ishto sheina kotza lo chal, if a person knows his wife is not separating chal properly, he should go ahead and he should just separate. And again, the same response. Some rulo, they said to him, A person cannot live with a snake in the basket. And the Gemara says, Man masni kol The one who learns it on this case, for sure, on that earlier case. Meaning to say, if you're going to have this machlokas by the chala, so for sure you'll have it by the case of the neder. But the one who learns it on that case, In other words, if you're going to say by the neder that there's this solution that you can have her make the neder again and annul it, that might be a solution over there, but by the case of Chala, where Chala is something that happens very frequently, it's quite possible that by Chala, there we would say it's impossible to really have a solution because she makes it so often, there's no way he's always going to remember to separate the Chala. And specifically what that means is, is that Rabbi Meir, who says there's a solution the husband can use when it comes to Nadarim, he would not agree with Rabbi Yehuda's solution when it comes to Chala. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Ve'ezui das Yehudas, what's considered the Jewish custom? Yotzev Arosha Paru, if she goes out without covering her head, so then that's a violation of Jewish custom. The Gemara says, Rosha Paru Do Raisa, if she goes out with an uncovered head, that's not a violation of custom, that's a violation of a Dindo Raisa. Dechsev, like the Pasuk says, Uparas Rosha Isha, it says by Sota, you uncover her head, and that implies that it's Mido Raisa, she has to cover it normally. But Tana Devei Rav Ishmael, it was taught in the Yeshiva Rav Ishmael, Azhar Levnosi Yisrael Shalo Yetzu, this is a warning for the daughters of Israel. They shouldn't leave with uncovered heads. So you see, it's a Doraisa. And the Gemara answers Doraisa, no, on a Doraisa level, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Bays, Amud Bays.